This is Rumble with Michael Moore. And I'm Michael Moore. Welcome, everyone. Back in February, shortly after President Biden was sworn in, I was joined on Rumble by Congresswoman Jackie Speer. She's from California. And she has been spearheading the push in Congress to finally amend the U.S. Constitution to enshrine equal rights for women. Nowhere in our Constitution do we talk about women, their equality, doesn't exist. We just celebrated on July 4th the 245th birthday of this country, and we are still having a problem saying the word women when we talk about our constitutional rights. Well, this struggle, which, which I've just pointed out, has been ongoing for the past century. But in the last few years, so much progress has been made. Virginia became the 38th state to sign off on the amendment in January of 2020. And the number now that's needed to officially make it the 28th Amendment of our Constitution is 38. We got it, 38 states. The number needed to officially make it the 28th Amendment to the United States Constitution. So, right, we're on the brink of victory? Well, sort of. Because the Republicans started saying, well, wait a minute, getting the 38th state was supposed, you're supposed to get those 38 states in a time period. Now, this isn't true for all amendments to the Constitution, but when this was passed back uh, in the 70s, uh, uh, in order to get these Republicans to go along, uh, they had to say, you know, we're just going to, we have to get these 38 states in X number of years. Well, they didn't get them in those years, but like so many other amendments, they did eventually get the number of states that were needed. And that's a fact. But the Democrats decided, you know what, let's just have a vote to get rid of that old deadline. Then the Republicans won't be able to say, hey, you didn't meet the deadline. And then thousands of you called your members of Congress and called the White House to demand that they prioritize the passing of the Equal Rights Amendment. The House went ahead and passed Jackie Spears' resolution to remove the deadline to ratify the ERA by a vote of 222 to 204 in the United States House of Representatives. So now we've got the 38 states. We've got the House saying, forget the old deadline. It doesn't matter. Didn't matter in all these other amendments to the Constitution. We got the 38 states. Let's put it in the Constitution. Um, Oh, but wait a minute. Yeah, now the House has removed the deadline. The Senate's got to remove it, too. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. So here we are. Now it's in the Senate's hands where SJ-1, that's the name of the bill, SJ-1 was introduced by a bipartisan group of senators. Yes, some Republicans, a few, joined on to say, forget the old deadline. We got the 38 states. It should be in the Constitution. But because the filibuster hasn't been abolished yet. Joe Biden, are you listening? You've got to tell them this is it. We're sick and tired of this. A majority is a majority. That's 51 votes. 50 Democrats plus the vice president, that's the majority. But because this hasn't been fixed yet, we are still trying to get now 60 votes in the Senate in order to let this now certified 38 state amendment, equal rights amendment for women, put into our Constitution. So, here we are today. We are in July of 2021, and I'm not giving up on this. I told you this at the beginning of the year. One of the things I was just going to keep on, keeping on, is this equal rights amendment has to be part of our Constitution. Just as women are mentioned in virtually every other democratic country in their Constitution, in the industrialized world, whatever you want to call it, women exist, and we need to do the same damn thing. In a moment, I'm going to be joined by a legendary and glass ceiling-breaking TV journalist, Carol Jenkins, who is also 
the president of the ERA Coalition, and she's going to be here, right here in just a couple of minutes, to discuss with me how we, you, me, all of us, got to this point, yay, but what we must still do in order to make equal rights for women part of the United States Constitution. So hang on for just a couple of minutes here. Uh, before we get to that, I just want to thank our underwriters for supporting today's podcast of Rumble. And our new underwriter today here on Rumble is Freshly. I, I'm sure you've heard of Freshly. It's a, it's a meal delivery service that's unlike all the others because they deliver fresh, healthy meals to your home or your apartment. Now, the, these are not some kind of crappy TV dinners. They are fully cooked meals designed by nutritionists and made by incredible chefs. So with Freshly, you get 30 different meal options, you know, meals like uh, steak peppercorn, sausage baked penne. Uh, they've got this great chicken pesto bowl. So listen, all you got to do, uh, and this is especially made for people like me. All you got to do is put it in the microwave for just three minutes. And that's one less thing you have to worry about uh, after work. So right now, Rumble listeners are getting a special here from Freshly. You can try Freshly for just $6.16 per meal. That's it. These meals, I'm telling you, they taste great. They're much healthier than the usual fare. They're fresher than your normal takeout meal. That should go without saying and they will save you time, and they will save you money. So, Freshly offer to all Rumble listeners $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash Rumble. So, stop stressing out about dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash Rumble for $40 off your first two orders. That's Freshly.com, and Freshly is spelled F-R-E-S-H-L-Y, Freshly. Freshly.com slash Rumble. $40 off on your first two orders. Thank you, Freshly, for coming on board here to support uh, my podcast. Okay, everyone. Now it is time to rumble. There's this thing called the ERA Coalition. That's the Equal Rights Amendment coalition. It's made up of 150 organizations across the country. The coalition provides research, education, and advocacy, and it works with both federal and state legislators in trying to get this as part of our our constitution. In the year 2020, uh, the ERA coalition was instrumental in the advocacy work that brought about the 38th and final state needed. That was Virginia for ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment to be placed now in the United States Constitution. And also, the ERA Coalition was active in the vote uh, of, the, of Jackie Spears' bill in the House last year to dissolve the time limit that had been weirdly attached to the Equal Rights Amendment back in the 70s, saying that you you had to get these states in this amount of time. The t- Just the last amendment that got it passed, 27th Amendment, that had been introduced 200 years uh, before it was ratified. So this is not a thing that's in the Constitution. It was a made-up thing that Congress did in the 70s, thus the kind of semi-pickle that we're in. I just also want to say that the ERA coalition um, has also continued its work in the Senate for the removal of that uh, timeline and took a leadership role in the development of an amicus brief supporting the attorney generals of Nevada, Illinois, and Virginia in their suit to compel the archivist, that's the guy who runs the National Archives, to publish the ERA. Did I say he was a guy? Yeah, he's a guy. Okay, no offense to him, um, but still, dude. Well, he, you know, the Trump administration forbade him from putting the ERA into the Constitution. Carol Jenkins, though, is here. She is our guest, and she is the president and CEO of the ERA Coalition and the Fund for Women's Equality. She's also an author and a former Emmy Award-winning journalist. How many women did you see on the evening news, if you're my age uh, or older? How many black women did you see reporting on the evening news? So she's a trailblazer uh, in her own right. She's here to lay out the roadmap for how we, you and me, the listeners of this podcast, how we make the Equal Rights Amendment the law of the land 
in 2021. Welcome, Carol Jenkins. Michael, thank you so much. You know, I always tell people because they're all, people always ask me, can you just give me the short version of the ERA? And my answer is always, there is no short version. We've been, been at this for a hundred years, but the way you presented it, you know, made it seem very doable. Don't you think, you know, that we should, after a hundred years, be, be yes. able to get this done? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> because, <laughs> because first of all, when I was in civics class, I was taught that we have a government, a democracy that's based on a majority rule, but minority rights. And so in this case, you have both. The majority rule, the majority of the country are women. There are more women than men. It's like 51, 49. Some years it ekes up near 52%. That's the majority. Women are the majority. And the minority rights is women are the minority because they don't hold the power. You know, we were so excited in November, uh, how many more women got elected to Congress? Well, you know, and I don't like, I don't want to rain on anybody's party and be the, the Debbie Downer here. But I said at the time, yes, progress. But we went from women having 20% of the seats in Congress from four years ago to 25% today. Right. So 52% right. of the population has, um, uh, 25% of the power, it, you know, that's a version and I hope this is okay to use this word, but when the, my, when the majority don't have the power and don't have access to the power, it's a version of apartheid. It's gender apartheid in the sense that the majority gender does not rule. Right. And you know why, right? You know, as we talk about systemic racism and systemic sexism, it's because it's the con U.S. Constitution that was written by white slaveholding uh, men uh, who had no thoughts about women. Well, that's one thing. Certainly not slaves. Certainly not anybody else that we would think would want to or need to be included in the Constitution. But, you know, they did give the ability to amend it at our Constitution has been amended 27 times now. Uh, it's just that this amendment to give women equal rights, uh, you know, and, and it doesn't even say that. What the amendment says is, you know, Michael, and thank you for your leadership in this, is that all it says is you cannot discriminate against someone because of their sex. And that means because of the recent Supreme Court decision, anyone's sex, any gender expression, and that's the only thing uh, that this amendment uh, fixes uh, as this constitution needs to, to be fixed. But I say, you know, let's not dream about some other solution to systemic sexism or racism. It's written in the playbook that we all have to live by. And Lincoln and the Congress at that time and the states at that time did take care of the racial part. It didn't, it didn't really it wasn't enforced. It didn't really come into action for another hundred years. And, and we're still fighting it now with voter suppression and all these other things. Um, eight minutes and 46 seconds. So we had a ways to go, but it got put in the constitution so that years later, when, when Martin Luther King, when others wanted to have, uh, have at least a leg up to try to get some equality, it was there in the constitution it was right there. And, um, and to this day, as you said, we don't, there, women are not acknowledged anywhere in the Constitution. 193 countries acknowledge uh, women, equal rights, whether it's equal rights for women, or there's not to be discrimination on the right. basis of gender. 193 countries, that's got to include some dictatorships. Have equal <laughs> rights for women. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's, it's extraordinary, isn't it? And uh you know, uh, we we are here. You know, the same woman, Alice Paul, Paul who gave women yes. uh, the right to vote, thought when that was passed that wait, we we have one more step to go. That really doesn't do it, as we can see. Women have had the vote for a hundred years now, and we're still unequal. Uh, right. And that one other piece was recognition in the in in the Constitution, uh, but it's taken all of this time. And Alice Paul, I am told, when. Uh, the, the uh, ERA finally passed Congress in 1972 and went out to the states uh, when she understood that it had 
this little thing written in the preamble in the introduction that said that there was a time limit that she actually cried because she knew mm. she knew that this was going to create a problem for uh, for getting it adopted into the constitution and so here we are now having met uh, the constitution only says article 5 two things you know passage by two thirds of the congress and 30 done days. right so, done done, done. Two thirds uh, of Congress already did it, and how many states? Thirty-eight states. Thirty-eight Virginia states was, uh, was our thirty-eighth state last year. Done. Uh, and done. So you know, it's just this wrinkle in the introduction that we're still fighting over. Um, that we hope the co Congress can dissolve. And uh, Jackie Spear last year was a miracle woman. She got that through the House of Representatives. Uh, it you know it passed. The resolution went out, but. In order for it to take, both houses have to pass it in the same uh, congressional session, and the Senate refused to take it up. But now uh, we have, well, now we have, we, uh, we, we who support well, equal rights uh, for women, right, right. we have the Senate, and we have some Republicans like Lisa Murkowski in the Senate who will join with us. Already said, yeah. she's already, she's a co-sponsor. Yes, she, with Ben Cardin, Senator Cardin. Right. Uh, we have, we believe that we, and uh, Susan Collins is also has been a stalwart supporter. So we have two Republican women, uh, and the entire Democratic caucus in the Senate. Uh, we just have not been able to get it, uh, to the floor okay. for a vote. So, uh, so let's just pretend like I'm a man. Yes. And so, and, and, re and let's reverse <laughs> this, that it wasn't 38 states and two thirds of Congress that said men. Uh, have won the right to do something, just whatever it, whatever it is. Like, like we have a constitutional right to hold the remote control. All right. So let's just say that became that, that once it's, we've got the 38 states, we've got two thirds of Congress. Now we have the House and the Senate where we can take the time limit uh, provision off because right. it's been put on and off, not just this amendment, but before. Yeah. yeah. It's like you know what guys would say if this was if this was I, you you stopping us from well, our we do, we do know we do know yeah because we because we've been throwing our weight around <laughs> for like ten thousand years and now I hope in my lifetime I will see the end well, of I that do, you do know that you're our hero right because you have consistently <laughs> been out there for us on this amendment. And so we, we so appreciate it. You're one of the few male voices that we hear who, who get it, who understand. You know, the question that we usually get uh, is, well, why do women need it? And what we say is, have oh. you looked, have you looked around? Do you know who the poor people are? The impoverished are women. Do you know who the starving are? They're children. One out of three children. I mean, this figure they usually use is one out of four, but we believe it's one out of three children who don't know where their next meal is coming from. And even if they're not in single family homes, if the women are partnering, the fact that they get paid less than men, you know, than their partners do is creating, uh, you know, this, this, as we saw, as we have seen during the pandemic, this huge, uh, scandalous, uh, group of people who, cannot afford to eat, who do not have homes, uh, and who are scared to death that they're going to die because they're essential workers. And so uh, it is, uh, it's time to rectify this. And with your help, I think we're going to get it done uh, this year in 2021. In, in addition to being the majority of our poor our women um, and children, um, the there's another fact that never really gets brought up. And I hear People, Democrats and Republicans, talk about the working class, the working, and they they conjure up the image of lunch bucket Joe. Um, and the truth is, in 2021, the majority of the working class, in other words, the lowest paid, right, amongst us, are women, right. That's and most of they, them they, lost their jobs. You know, uh, oh, they know, were the jobs. first to go in the pandemic. Right. And, or, I mean, there's so many statistics on this with what we're living through right now. I, thank you for saying that about. You know, I, I, you know, part of this is, you know, I'm, I mean, I don't want to say I'm motivated for selfish reasons here, but, but I just say this to guys all the time that we will benefit. We as men are going to benefit. And I show, I talk about 
the countries around the world where that where they have close to a majority of their legislatures are women, or they have a, a, a executive, a president, or prime minister. Generally, those countries, if you look at the good that they do for the working class, for the poor, uh, for children, um, education, health, all these things. I mean, I hate to say that as guys, you know, but you know, if you've ever been married to any of us. To get us to go to the dentist, you might as well literally be pulling teeth. So I mean, I'm just saying. So right. I'm, I'm, but, but you know, I, 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 I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've ever said this publicly, but I, I, I actually feel blessed. I've, I've only, I have only lived in in majority female households in my life. Uh, I've never been in the majority from birth, from birth. So it's, it's myself and my two I sisters. You're such a good guy, right? You're one of I don't, the good Well, guys. I think I did pay attention and I, you know, and whenever there was a vote in the house, it was my two sisters and my mom and then me and my dad, it was three to two. And wow. then eventually very quickly though, while in elementary school, I realized that, that actually their way was better. So then it became four to one. Then my dad realized, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm all in. So it was like a five to zero, but, but it was, it was a, uh, and then, you know, I was married and had a daughter. So again, two to one, uh, but it wasn't, but it wasn't that either because by then I was semi enlightened and, uh, and, um, and fortunate to be living in households uh, where, um, where I could learn um, but a lot of this two guys, I mean, the guys are just thinking, okay, Okay, dude, what is wrong with you? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, if you know, there's, um, if we would just like lower the volume a little bit, you know, and listen, um, there's a lot of things uh, we can learn, and we will be better off. All of us will be better off for it. I truly, truly believe that. You know, our country has gotten extremely wealthy. We're, you know, a very well-off nation for most of it. Besides the fact that we have so many starving people, you know, that scandal. Uh, but corporate America has gotten extraordinarily uh, profitable uh, by the, yeah. by the uh, imbalance of payments of, uh, uh, of income for, uh, for the women who work in almost every category on a, a, almost every level. Right. So I think that, you know, one of the things that gets me so upset is that every year we do the equal pay story. You know, you can tell when that comes around, you know, when a woman generally has to work to make what a white man made the year before a black woman, a Latina woman has to work a year to equal the same salary as the, the man did the, the year before. It's infuriating. And yeah. what I say is that we have tried everything else. We've thrown trillions of dollars time and energy and it doesn't get fixed and it's because the constitution isn't fixed and so i think uh with your help we've got to make sure that that you know that that happens that we get a level playing field and and everyone you know it's uh you know we're talking about uh, uh inclusion by sex now but it, the other things that need to be fixed are disability you know the gender expression we're working on that that's included in this uh, you know, in this amendment, uh, but th but our country, so many people are suffering. You cannot tell me that that many categories of people will be at the bottom of the heap in terms of equality, and we do nothing to fix it. So, right, right. It, um, I, you know, on that on that gender equality day, like how few, how less days men have to work to right. to attain what women get each year. I have two uh, nonprofit theaters in Michigan, um, art house movie theaters. And on that day, every year to celebrate, celebrate that, yes. um, men coming to the, my movie theater, uh, on that day have to pay that percentage more. So if, if women are making only 80 cents on the dollar, uh, men have to pay 20% more, uh, for the movie ticket that day than women, uh, coming to see. <laughs> I just great. like look, seeing the fa their faces like, what the, <laughs> that's not the way to fix it by discriminating against us. And <laughs> I said, that, don't think of it as discrimination. Just think of it as a little, little tweak, a little pinch to remind you and me and other men that we have to be at the forefront of this fight too. And, um, so to the people listening, Carol, um, tell them, what are the things that they can do to join in 
and to help, to help get the Equal Rights Amendment actually literally, it's already been passed. So literally put into, written down in our Constitution. Well, we are doing two things. We've delivered a letter to President Biden and Vice President Harris asking them, because we know they support it, uh, to use whatever uh, they have at their disposal. Uh, one of the reasons is the archivist has not uh, attached it is because of the Department of Justice of a previous administration instructed him not to. And not that we want interference in the Department of Justice, but there is a memo sitting there that could be somehow... Well, we don't want to encourage any kind of illegal activity, but instruct the archivist in whatever way is possible for him to just publish the ERA. There's a short way. Uh, and otherwise, to use his tremendous experience in Congress uh, to massage the vote so that we can... Joe uh, Biden. Can, Joe Biden, yeah. so that we can uh, can get the, uh, the resolution out of the Senate. Uh, so because of the filibuster, we would need the 60 votes. Uh, there might be a way of now that uh, Durbin is in judiciary uh, and Schumer is the leader, we might be able to get a vote uh, or uh, that we have the 52 votes that would give us the Equal Rights Amendment. So what people can do is uh, implore their senators. That's the focus we have. Uh, as uh, Jackie Spear has magnificently collected so many spot co-sponsors and, and votes in the House, but in the Senate to impress upon your senators that you, uh, you realize that we do not have equality and that it is time in 2021 to give uh, equality to based on sex, no discrimination based on sex, and just remove the time limit on the ERA so that we can proceed then you know, to, to, you know, when we started this organization, we thought, oh, we'll just get the ERA and then we'll all go home. What, a, what an accomplishment that would be. Yeah. And then, of course, we began to realize the years ahead of us uh, that, that we will have to do to correct imbalances. One of our members in Arizona uh, has gotten 22, 24 pro bono lawyers and looked in Arizona at the rules in the uh, state government that will have to be changed. That report is 650 pages long. So mm. the work ahead of us uh, right. to, to erase that written in stone in, you know, rules across this country, all of that work still, you know, is ahead of us. So okay. employ your senators. Okay. So, all right. So let me just, I'll put this very bluntly then. Uh, so Carol Jenkins. Yes. To the people listening to the my podcast right now, what can they do to, to make sure that the Equal Rights Amendment is part of our United States Constitution, already passed by Congress, already passed by the required 38 states, still um, not in the Constitution? What can they do so that it becomes part of the Constitution this yeah. year? Tell them. Tell them right now what they can do. Uh, go to our website, eracoalition.org. We give you a way to reach your senators uh, erase that deadline, get rid of that, and that is the stumbling block that will be in our way until it's completely taken away by Congress in both the House and the Senate. It will always, uh, uh, straight up to the Supreme Court, uh, be an issue and a stumbling block. So we need that erased. Uh, go to our website, eracoalition.org, and help us reach the Biden administration. We know that they support us. We know that they want to do this. You know, all of the polling suggests that 90 plus percent of America is ready for this. It yeah. is only a few legislators who are not. Uh, it's hard to find people these days who say there should not be equality or sure, we should dis discriminate based on sex. Hard to, hard to find those people these days. But it's a it's a legislative thing that has to be done. And, you know, we ask for your support. Uh, come to we will. We will assist you in whatever way we can. We've evaluated uh, all of the senators and all of the House of Representatives where they stand on equality. Uh, so it's an easy way, our elect equality tool, to determine uh, where your representatives stand on the issue and to, you know, let's make a ruckus and let's make sure, you know, that we get it done. Okay. So you go to eracoalition.org. Right. Right. ERA coalition.org. And there 
you will have what you need because when you call your senators, you got to know the name of the bill you're asking them to get behind, right? Right. Um, SJ one in the Senate. S SJ Res one. So we oh, moved up and we moved up. Well, SJ <laughs> Resolution one. One in the Senate. That's Boy, that's right. easy to remember. So and, you you call your senators, right? The number to Capitol Hill switchboard is 202-224-3121. I'll post it on my podcast page here in case you didn't write that down. And you call and you ask to speak one to the first senator, then you got to get back on the phone and talk to the second senator. And you say, I need you immediately to pass SJ Resolution 1 in the U.S. Senate for the Equal Rights Amendment. And, to, and it's to get rid of the time limit, which the 27th Amendment didn't have. They had 20, 200 years to get that passed. <laughs> but women, we only gave you like a decade or so in the 70s. If you couldn't get it passed, then then to hell with you. No, we don't agree with any of that. Neither do you. Listen to this. So you call your senators, 202-224-3121. Tell them to pass SJ resolution number one. And and um and then then you've got to let President Biden and Vice President Harris know that you want this as a priority and you can reach them at whitehouse.gov. But the, these are the they hold the power. They have the White House, the House, the Senate. Um, and you know what I how I feel about the filibuster. That thing's gotta end. And if the Republicans want to filibuster this, let them stand there. And filibuster, stand and talk, one of you, at a time, till you drop. No food, no water, no sleep. Stand for a day or two. Stretcher will come in and take you out. See how many Republicans want to stand up against women's rights. I don't think it's going to be a lot, folks. Um, but, you know, I hope the Democrats will take care of this crazy filibuster thing. That's my own opinion, not, not the purpose of this episode. But uh, um, we need to get as many Republicans... Because that can't be a bad thing to get behind this. Carol, what else? Anything else people can do to help? That's it. And just to live equality in your own lives. Understand, um, you know, that this is not an abstract idea that people are starving, that there's a way to fix it. Uh, and it is by amending the Constitution. And we can do Band-Aids until we fix the Constitution, but they will only be Band-Aids. This is the... This is the, the trail we have to follow to true equality in the United States of America. I don't think you're asking for a lot <laughs> by, by asking that the United States Constitution uh, state specifically that it includes 51% of the American population, more than 51% women. So women and girls. Um, all right. Well, I really appreciate you coming on uh, and saying these things. Thank you for the kind words. Um, about what we've been doing here. We are not going to let up on this. We want everybody participating in our ERA initiative. And uh, let's get this done now, this year. No more horsing around on this. It's wrong. It's morally wrong. And you know, you know, whoever you are, it's the right thing to do. Do the right thing. Carol Jenkins, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michael. We love you. We're this um, is Michael Moore fan club because um, we know that you are behind the Equal Rights Amendment and you have been for many, many years. So thank you. Well, I got to tell you, that was great speaking to Carol Jenkins. An honor to have her on this podcast. Uh, I remember her back when I was a kid. Uh, as I said in this interview with her, you did not see women reporters or anchors. You didn't, and you certainly didn't see black women reporters and anchors. She broke that barrier, and she is still with us. And now she is fighting to make sure the barriers are broken for all women by getting the ERA in our Constitution. So, you've got your marching orders, my friends. Right? You've got to push the Senate right now. And, you know, I would really, I know you're thinking, oh, my God, this, I call the Senate. I got these awful senators. Listen, here's the, here's the thing in our favor. Women are the majority gender. That means more women vote than men. But it's even better than that. You know, women to men is like 51 to 49% of the country. Sometimes it's, depending on the year, 
percent to forty eight percent. So there's there's always you know more of them because they're the majority gender, but, but they also vote more than men depending on the year. I mean they can they could be voting sometimes ten points higher uh, than men in our elections. So Republicans who are listening to this and Republican senators, you need to tell your Republican senators, look. You know, we may not agree on a lot of things, but you want to be reelected. You do not want to be listed as one of the Republicans who said, no, women shouldn't have equal rights and they should not be in the United States Constitution. If that's the position you're going to take, and believe me, Carol's group, Jackie Spears' group, all, me, you, all of us, we are going to make sure that the citizens of this country know the names of the senators, the Republican senators, who vote against this. They can't win without women's votes. They know that. They need to be reminded of that. And in their own self-interest, even though the last thing they want to do, probably, is to give equal, equal rights to women. I even have to laugh when I say that. It's such a weird concept. But that it does. they know it's in their best interest. They had better well vote for this because we're going to make it public and we're going to come after them, and they're not going to get reelected. They're not going to get reelected for a whole lot of other reasons, too, because we need a stronger Democratic majority than the one we have now, where we end up having to beg certain Democrats to please be Democrats. My friends, you have to do this. I'm sorry to ask you again. Sorry to give the number again, but as I already showed you, the rumble bump, you did this when I asked you to do it back at the beginning of the year to call your members of Congress, and boom, it passed to get rid of this deadline, the deadline that you know was set up so long ago. All we care about is the 38 states that were needed to pass it have now passed it, and it should be part of our United States Constitution, just like that. So call your senators. I'll give you the number. And I'll have it here on the platform page where you found my podcast. 202-225-3121. A human operator will pick up. And you need to say, I need to speak to my senator. And they'll say, what state? And you'll, you'll say, you know, Wisconsin or whatever. And then they'll say, do you want to speak to Senator so-and-so first or the other one? Just pick one, call back, call, and then speak to the other one. But really make sure you speak to the Republicans. And if you if you have two Democratic senators, like we do in Michigan, then you need to call them, too, and tell them that you're calling senators, as are thousands of other listeners of Rumble. And we expect nothing less than women being given equal rights, as 38 states have already voted and passed this amendment, which is what is the number, that's the number required by the Constitution. So please call them tonight, tomorrow, whenever, 202 202- Two two five, three one, two one. Let's make this a reality, please, my friends. I'm not going to stop until it is. I want to thank my executive producer Basil Hamden and my editor and sound engineer Nick Quaz, and everyone else who has helped to make this podcast possible. Thank you, all of you. This is Rumble, and I am Michael Moore. Thanks, everyone. Take care.